Парев Джесс. Hello. Здравствуйте. I will I will speak in English. Uh, <coughs> mostly because my presentation is in English and uh, I would also think that uh, that would give additional um, international feeling to what we're doing here and um, also it would be easier not to translate some terms and some um, concepts that uh, describe the sort of future challenges that mass media journalism and civics experience uh, in the beginning of the 21st century. Um, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm trying in my presentation to merge journalism and media, media as a business and media as a social service because as we have discovered in uh, the recent decades, uh, this is, we are all in this together. I mean, media business doesn't thrive in undemocratic societies, and societies are becoming undemocratic when media uh, is in decline there. So uh, I will start from the first challenge when we speak about the future of our profession and our business. Uh, and this is uh, the challenge of thinking. Uh, you can, when, whenever you look into the future, you can think about the object which you analyze either as an island, which is stable, protected, beautiful, uh, full of life, or you can think about it as an iceberg, which uh, you only know the upper part of it and you know, don't know what, what is beneath the water. And the only thing you may be sure about that it will melt and disappear. Uh, I will speak about this in the first part of the presentation. The second part of the presentation would be about the challenge of change. Uh, for older generations, uh, the change that had occurred within last three, four decades is immense. I mean, uh, our proud sponsor from Beline said, that his children don't remember the world without SMS. But I would uh, probably surprise you that the first commercial SMS has been sent not in the day when internet was opened in 1991, but seven years later in 1998. So, uh, and now we can't imagine, cannot imagine the world without text communications, without messengers, without mobile. Uh, and without uh, uh, internet services that actually are just less than 30 years uh, old. Mm, this change uh, has accelerated and this acceleration is another problem that media, as well as technology, as well as the state, as well as the citizenry experience. And the third part is the challenge of uh, post-truth or the challenge of uh, absolutely new and undiscovered and unclear methods of uh, averting media as a social institution, as a public eye, as a watchdog, and, uh, and, and the problem that has been deeply rooted in the society uh, and only sort of within the last several years we started to realize that we have to think and work more averting this. So let's come back to the idea of uh, island and iceberg thinking about the future of media and the future of journalistic profession. In the old, good old days, uh, it was very simple. It was money in exchange of communication object, would be it newspaper or magazine or uh, TV program, which you probably paid with your viewing of advertising. Then, the hard times came when the media became uh, abundant and uh, 90s and the early 2000 uh, decade uh, had been a period when we had so much media uh, around us that within a single decade the media consumption in most countries grew more than two times from about five hours a week to about uh, a day to about ten hours a day, uh, making it together the largest human occupancy 
of, of all things, including work, sleep, eating, uh, sort of sex, whatever. I mean, it's two times more than we work and about two times more than we sleep. Uh, and now it comes to something that for traditional journalism, for traditional media business looks like the last day of Pompeii when everything is so, everything is so much, everything is so abundant and everything is so pervasive and everything is, 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 is so delivered to you that you cannot find actually the place for what you're doing in uh, this, this very complex communication world. But let's think positive. Uh, let's think we, as a media workers, as journalists, as businessmen, uh, and, and, uh, and, and civic servants of uh, public interest, that we are on the island, the beautiful island that, uh, that, that we need to explore and develop and help free and uh, keep its beauty. Uh, media industry is still great and big. Uh, even falling and disappearing newspapers are still the largest single uh, business in the world perspective. It's about uh, three times, four times bigger than the music industry and about uh, twice as big as um, filmed entertainment uh, and about 60% bigger than book publishing and educational publishing. Uh, although this, this, this chart is probably not uh, so positive, but you still, you still see that, that, that a huge amount of money comes directly from uh, the consumer. I mean, consumer pays for news, consumer pays for, 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 for information, for entertainment. Uh, even this chart that shows U.S. Uh, share of digital and uh, non-digital uh, advertising shows that it's not that bad. I mean, the, the decline, although it looks, uh, it looks pr probably quite steep, um, is, is, is compensated uh, by a huge rise of uh, digital income. Uh, so the conclusions of this is that the media industry is still very big. I mean, it's still, it's still a very large and important chunk of every nation's economy. Uh, and audiences still read, consume, watch, listen, whatever, whatever we need from them. And uh, that people would not be interested in media if journalism would not rise, uh, if journalism doesn't rise uh, important issues. And advertisers are very much used to professional context of their, uh, of, of their placements. And society need at least some watchdogs because uh, it pays for people who does this journalism. And the most important positive conclusion from the island thinking is that we are no dinosaurs. We know what's happening. But let's try a negative thinking option and let's think we are on the iceberg. Uh, one of the most troubling graphs uh, uh, for traditional media, for media, of publishing for media, of news making, is this one, is the real distribution of media consumption and the trends that happen there. I mean, online grows all the other, except gaming, falls. And the share is dramatically changing towards digital. And the digital is ruthless because instead of billions that flow into traditional media, uh, even in television, we only see stagnation there. I mean, the figures are not really much growing in the perspective of five, seven years. But in, for example, digital video, uh, we see five-time growth in this year in new forms, I mean, the, the complex forms of, of digi digital, digital media. We see eight-time growth and we see a steep decline in newspapers and magazines in particular. So this is the iceberg thinking. Nobody reads, nobody cares, everything is in decline. New media are too often produced by non-professionals. Uh, traditional journalism business is not in high demand. 
and cheap labor and editorial, editorial routines are rejected. I mean, cheap labor replaces editorial routines an excessive number of journalists that cover sometimes unimportant, um, like in general unimportant, but in the, in the long run very important things. Uh, uh, this, the iceberg thinking makes you a conclusion that smaller markets are in big danger, and especially markets that are not self-contained in terms of economy, and that politicians and the states in general are much more ignorant about mass media than, than they should be, and the problem is that consumers love kittens. Too much love, too much kittens. Uh, here we come to the challenges, and the first and foremost challenge is the changing consumer and I would say the social change, the, the change that social media provides to media in general and media consumption. Uh, this graph probably a little bit complex to understand, but I will try to explain that uh, if we take traditional consumer, most of his time he spends with television. The modern consumer, the consumer of uh, sort of present, uh, divides his consumption between, between, between sort of traditional web and, uh, and television and a little bit less of mobile. The emerging consumer, the consumer that comes from a younger generation, they uh, immediately move to mobile media consumption, they still consume quite a lot of uh, traditional web uh, through their desktop or laptop computer, and the consumption of television is in, 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 on the third place. But what will happen in the future with this is very difficult to say, and I will come later to that because, because there is much more important figures to say. Uh, when, when we see that the future, and the future of our kids that are absolutely stick to their mobile screens, is about, is there an information format, a communication format that fits mobile first? Uh, the business question uh, comes as a next generation question. When, when, when newspapers were in decline and the web was on the rise, my friend John Patton of uh, Digital First uh, conglomerate uh, created a concept of digital, digital dimes replacing paper dollars. Uh, dime uh, is a 10 cent uh, coin of American, um, American dollar. Now the concept is that mobile pennies are replacing digital dimes because mobile advertising is even more cheap and CPTs are even, even, even less than, than uh, for uh, web uh, sites and uh, apps, for example. The problem with uh, extreme digitalization of journalism uh, is an emergence of robotic journalism. Uh, even, even larger conglomerates like Associated Press and Bloomberg and, uh, and even some newspapers have replaced some routine journalistic tasks like description of the behavior of uh, uh, exchange tickers or commodities or real estate listings to robots and robots do it faster, better, cheaper or even for zero cost and so on. And everyone is asking whether Facebook is media and whether Facebook as the largest social network humankind ever had and probably would never have any more, uh, isn't it as a is a huge threat for, for mass media and journalism as such. Um, I would say the good news is that we have a plateau now. I mean, it's, it's a stable, more or less sustainable situation that doesn't seem to have any crisis lying ahead of us, at least in the next five years. Uh, media consumption trends really don't change much within the uh, last five-year period, and we see no technological or social disruptor that would dramatically change the way it works. Some of the specific generation targeted media in many countries uh, have been much more successful than non-generation oriented media. For example, in the United States, AARP magazine and general 
AARP is the American Association of Retired People, which unites Americans, like 65 million Americans of uh, age of 55 and older. Uh, is still the largest printed publication in the world, uh, amassing 25 million copies monthly, and, uh, and it's not in decline at all. Uh, neither it is in digital, because uh, the younger generations coming to near pension age, uh, age they, 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 also, they also start to consume, but they want to do it in digital form. So, uh, so, so, so they, they stick to the brand and continue uh, to, to be the audience. Mm, and the threat of uh, sort of revitalization and changes in, in the way we work and live uh, actually is good for media because it gives more free time and expands the capacity for media consumption in terms of time. And there are forms of journalism that free from mobile. Uh, a little bit about technology. It's a really fast, I will try to be the really fast. Technology is usually described in most presentations through uh, a Gartner curve. Uh, it's, it's a special uh, type of presentation of the emerging, developing, and declining uh, technologies that, that affect, uh, in this particular case, mass media and journalism and communication as such. This is a graph of 2006. And you see that, oh, sorry, I, I, I was mistaken to go other direction, that uh, something called Web 2.0, a social web, and something that is called speech recognition is on the top of hype in 2006. There are no iPhone yet. It's, it's uh, summer of 2006. iPhone will be out one year later. Uh, smartphone is something that is expected to, to, be, to be on the market next year. And now we see the, the most recent Gartner curve which demonstrate us that every technology, actually every technology from the first one, has been put into action and affect our daily life. And there are two more coming that are extremely, extremely important, but we have time to be prepared. It gives about 10 to 15 years for brain interface and direct human computer augmentation. Uh, to grow up. It either goes the other way. People think that immediate reactions they can do with the mobile uh, social networks, with comments on the websites, with direct communication with politicians, uh, regardless national, local or international, uh, that this is their citizen citizenry. This is, this is the way they express themselves as a citizens. It's much easier to ignore digital communication than any other form. Uh, another good news about technology that we have now a clear sample of platform duopoly in the mobile and it will not change. Apple and Android had divided the market the same way like Apple and PC divided the market of uh, computers, and this would probably be more or less stable for another 10, 15 years. So it's safe to, to be oriented on these two platforms as technological company for, for media business. And it seems that we are facing also Plata in this continuous discussion on the copyright issues that is more and more important for the Western world and it also one of the most important subjects uh, now of the world business organizations because it's a huge part of the, uh, of the industry that, 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 uh, that is in, in, in a serious legal crisis. And now the social challenge and the social challenge regardless of whatever you have I mean, I don't know, probably Armenia is a country, but, uh, but you'll still have the problem of Facebook. And this is something I promised you in, in the earlier part of the presentation. Today, in 2016, we have about 13% of population 
of which we don't know a thing in terms of their media consumption and in a result their attitudes toward uh, society organization, towards the way society should communicate with the governing powers. It's about 13% of them. It's the people younger than 15 years. It will take 10 years for this part to grow to about 30% of the global population. It's an amazing, amazing growth that will happen and that will completely change the face of media. Facebook today is the largest social organization humankind ever had seen. 1.7 billion, uh, billion people are using it at least once a day. Uh, it's 23% of the global population, very similar figure to what I told you about, 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 about unknown kids and their behavior and their, and their attitude to, to the way we live. And one of the most striking st stats I found preparing this presentation that there are more people on Facebook than people smoking. Um, but Facebook is not alone. Facebook is supported by a huge and growing and developing and competing uh, industry that takes this digital social uh, into new dimension and creates an absolutely new reality which is I just want them to underline is supported but this by this future 30% of a known population of the world and now to a political part in <laughs> uh, every country in every society, people face the problem of, uh, of this. I mean, mass media had made us more literate, more clever, more engaged, more communicated, but it also created the problem of distribution of something that is not true or irrelevant or even contagious or malignant. What these things have in common? Uh, first of all, it's the misunderstanding and the mis mis misinterpretation of the fact that the world is much better today than it was just 10 years ago. Not speaking about 20 years ago, not speaking about 30 years ago. Uh, Steven Pinker, great American uh, order, has underlined that even such normal thing for humans as violence is on a whole human history minimum now. Even wars uh, in, in the human, in, in, which, which are inevitable in the, nation, in the world of the nation states, I mean, are under a steep decline. This, this, you see the, the difference between 2001 and 2007, and even if we continue this further, is the most peaceful part of the human history ever. The world is literate. The world will be even more literate within the next uh, decade. But instead of making us all happy about the information, the truth, the uh, engagement, mass media, and this is in 100% a part of the human nature, and it's a problem of dream. I mean, people tend to dream about better, but they always remember that things were worse, and they think this worse things will come. And politicians and even specific media organizations, and definitely sometime, sometimes the states, they play on, they, they, they sort of, they insist, that in order not to allow the worst things to happen, you must do something. You must follow somebody, like Donald Trump is saying, make America great again, but every word in this phrase is false. America is the greatest country ever. The 
shape of American economy is the best in the whole history. The American population is the largest and the most diverse and the most complete now. And what, is, what, 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 we sh what America should do about itself. This is, this is same in every um, political populism and uh, well, like racial derailment things in Europe, they go for the same, same fear that, and, and same dream of something better. Uh, there's also inequality behind that. I mean, humans are created equal, but they don't have similar wealth or similar capacity of doing things. And this inequality uh, is especially visible when the society becomes richer. And therefore, this strange change that occurred in the richest societies, which gave a path to vocal nationalists, uh, isolationists, racists, and so on, is in effect result of uh, growing inequality in large and wealthy societies. And communication and media and journalism is the problem because it tends to deliver this message because they try to be relevant to the interests of groups of population that support such outrageous and uh, completely malignant conspiracy theories about why other countries are trying to instigate rev orange revolutions or other countries it's trying to commit regime change or, 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 or Russia uh, meddling uh, in European affairs in order to expand to the former shape of the Soviet Union. This is, this is about simple and no simple versions of media. Simple version of media goes with the flow. It goes with whatever uh, consumer, ordinary consumer, lowest common denominator consumers want. It's a fragmentation. Do things smaller, do things more consumable. It's about click bite content, which is about headlines that sell rather than information that is interesting. It's about agenda setting and agenda manipulation is the famous Russian weapon. Uh, it's the, 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 the distribution of conspiracy theories. It's illusion of the simple answers that could be given on every question, regardless are you expert on this question or not. It's uh, the celebrity politics. It's over-emotional television. Talk shows where people where people shout uh, on each other and, and you cannot understand who speaks what. And it's the con concept of the mean world, that the world is worse than you really experience. Uh, and not, simple, not, not so simple answers to that is uh, media mission is being disenfranchised. And this is what um, representative for media of uh, organization of uh, security in Europe does a lot to sort of to, to re-enfranchise media into societies, to explain the value of the freedom of the press, the value of independent opinion, the, the value of the real expertise, the value of human right of, for free speech. Uh, and one important thing that an old person who started his work with uh, paper, in, in the newspaper with uh, uh, old type of printing machines, linotypes and so on. Unfortunately, the internet age, whatever we think about it and about power and wealth, uh, has not solved the problem of media development and democratization. Unfortunately, internet gave more corporate control over communication than ever. Five global companies control now 80% of internet money. We call them FAFA. Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple, and Microsoft. Uh, unfortunately, we haven't seen yet how internet had advanced a democratization of the state and the relations between people and the state. And unfortunately, we also see how 
non-democratic states and autocratic and totalitarian states exercise an internet um, censorship. And they do it in an even more profound and uh, professional way than ever. Uh, and we yet see that instead of television coach potatoes, we got social media coach potatoes. People who watch other people feeds or sell their likes or participate in discussions that mean nothing. This is, this is, this is also about clickbait. I mean, social media and especially sites like BuzzFeed, Gawker, uh, they developed so-called clickbait content. This is about sell you the news that may be not relevant to what is said there. Uh, well, like, man tries to hug a wild lion, you won't believe what happens next. And then it, you could everything under there, but you'll click on that and you bring your digital scent to the media. Uh, politicians are also becoming big media companies. Donald Trump on Twitter is bigger than Associated Press. Yet, he's not as big as CNN. But Barack Obama is about three times bigger than CNN. Uh, just last week, uh, in New York, after the um, suspected terrorist attack with the uh, with a bomb uh, on the 19, uh, on the 23rd Street, uh, the police had first time in history exercised a digital wanted thing. They sent to every phone on whole Manhattan a digital wanted poster. Unfortunately, I couldn't put it in the presentation. 2.2 million mobile smartphone owners received the poster saying that such suspect is wanted. He was found in less than 24 hours. Then imagine what media power has Mark Zuckerberg, who can address 1.7 billion people in a single click. Uh, Walter Lippmann, the founder of uh, sort of modern, modern and responsible journalism, said sometime that when distant and unfamiliar complex things are communicated to great masses of people, the truth suffers and considerable and often a radical distortion. The complex is made over into the simple, the hypothetical into dogmatic, and the relative into an absolute. This great saying of Walter Lippmann is something we as professionals who want to live in the future, who want to be responsible for our societies, for our profession, must remember. And as every motivational speaker, I would end up with some traditional words. Stay for what you believe in, be social in all, th in all terms, be head of change, master what you're good at, don't be afraid to go against the stream. Yes, the media future is about this simple and absolutely important principles. And the media for the 21st century is media for people and by people. It's a media for the better world and a media for the better human. Thank you.